It should come as no surprise on a day like today in which we commemorate the Clyde Revolt, in which my predecessor, the late and noble uh, Davy uh, Kirkwood, was a major participant, that I, the Member for Parliament for Western Bartonshire, will not be voting with the Government through the lobbies yeah. tomorrow. And also, as a constituency MP from Scotland, I will take no greater honour than following my fellow members here in the Scottish National Party in voting against Article 50. My constituency, like the nation of Scotland, voted to remain, so I make this contribution in this debate, and a mandated by my community and mandated by my nation, my nation, in the hope that the United Kingdom Government acknowledges and listens to their concerns. Some may refuse to represent and stand up for their Remain voting constituents and meekly act as a cheerleader for the United Kingdom Government as it rips my nation out of the European Union without a plan in place, hell-bent on placing my constituents in a precarious position economically, socially and politically. And I am proud that the Scottish National Party will not behave in such a manner. Now, during this referendum campaign, those advancing a Leave vote spoke of Britain taking back control. Yet what we have witnessed in the United Kingdom Government is stumbling along with no strategy, no clue, losing control and rushing through a bill, this bill, in a bid to avoid full parliamentary and public scrutiny. What have they got to hide? Instead of bringing back control to a political state, We have seen control and influence given to the unelected, not only in that bunch of warmers in the House of Lords, but to global corporations who are carrying out dodgy deals with the British government behind closed doors. We need not only look at the deal involving Nissan to see where control lies. The government offered support and assurances to Nissan that it would try to secure (coughs) tariff-free access to the single market but have refused to publish the letter which contained these remarks. Of course, that was before the British Prime Minister kiboshed the idea of staying in the single market. This wasn't and this isn't taking back control. This is giving away your power and the government needs to get its act together before it loses control completely. In addition, Madam Deputy Speaker, we are now seeing pressure mounting on the UK government from Goldman Sachs to ensure the City of London is protected from Brexit. More millionaires and billionaires, with no thought given to the impact on the rest of the country, including my constituents. It's a leadership steering the economy into a political maelstrom, hell-bent on wedding us to a flotilla led by a reactionary isolationist that places America first. And as we leave the European Union, we seem to be seen to a new Pax Americana, in which the United Kingdom might as well be floating off on a cloud of narrow-mindedness, ignorance and intolerance. And whilst power and increasing influence are given to those with no political mandate, and for the record, for Hansard, that it yet again includes that bunch of unelected, unaccountable House of Warmers at the other end of the corner. They are removing from the Parliament of Scotland and its government for their being ignored, and with it is particularly insulting that that unelected House of Lords will have a greater say in Article 50 legislation than the elected institutions of my nation. Scotland, as well as Wales and Northern Ireland. So much for a union of equals. But let us go back to a critical manner that in times where have passed would have taken more debate in this House and which will be impacted by Brexit, and that is the position in Northern Ireland. Like many members in this House, I represent a constituency with a substantial member of the Irish diaspora of every aspect of Irish society, nationalist, republican and unionist. And where is the debate? Where is this House putting its foot down and demanding that we bring forward legislation within the amendments? Within the amendments, will the government support the amendments to make sure that the Ireland Act of 1949 is not repudiated by the government of the United Kingdom and undermining the priest process which impacts not only Northern Ireland, but our nearest European neighbour and communities the length and breadth of the United Kingdom. Silence from the British Conservative Party, at least 
There are those, some of those, in the British Labour Party with guts who will follow us through the lobbies tomorrow. <coughs> Least said about their leadership, the better.